Welcome back to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Anthony of Padua, priest and doctor of the church. And I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Our Alexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 20 through 26. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who gave St. Anthony of Padua to your people as an outstanding preacher and an intercessor in their need, grant that with his assistance, as we follow the teachings of the Christian life, we may know your help in every trial. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our scripture passage. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raga, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fire, fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother. And then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court with him. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Today's Gospel reading according to St. Matthew is all about repentance for the wrongdoings we have done, and the guarantee of God's mercy. The gospel passage comes from the Sermon on the Mount and is the first of six so-called antitheses where Jesus contrasts the demands of the law with those of the gospel. Virtue for the scribes and Pharisees was largely measured by external observance of the law. For Jesus, that's not enough. For him, real virtue is in the heart. There was a commandment not to kill. Still is. It's the fifth commandment. But Jesus says that even hatred and anger, violence in the heart, often expressed by abusive language, must also be avoided and is sinful. Furthermore, we cannot have one set of relationships with God and another set with people. So it is of no use going to pray and make our offering to God if we've done hurt to a brother or sister. Jesus says, leave your gift at the altar. And first go and be reconciled with your brother or sister. Only then should we come to offer our gift. I can't say I love God if I hate a brother or sister. St. John taught us if someone says he loves God but hates his brother, he's a liar. And as often as you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it to me. We hear later on in St. Matthew's Gospel. Repentance has to be expressed both to God and the person I've hurt. 
It's not possible to be reconciled to one and not to the other. We have something like this in every celebration of the Eucharist, although in practice it can be very superficially done. At the beginning of the communion, we together recite the Lord's Prayer in which we say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. How often are we conscious of saying those words? And how often do we really mean those words? Just after that, we're invited to share a sign of peace with those around us. Again, this can be done in a very perfunctory way. But the meaning of this gesture is that we want to be totally in a spirit of union and reconciliation with each other before we approach the Lord's table to break together the bread, which is the sign of our unity as members of his mystical body and why we call it communion. As usual, after our closing prayer, we read the scripture passage again. Contemplate its message and concentrate on a thought that the Holy Spirit places in your heart. This can be either through a verse or even just a small word from the scripture passage. Then ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you, and more importantly, how you may spiritually grow in imitation of Jesus, fulfilling the will of our Heavenly Father. Let us complete our divine reading with a closing prayer, and let us pray. Governed by your Holy Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those who contemplate and embrace your divine word, that in professing you, not just in words, but also in works, and in spirit and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in always. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, please click the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And click on the notification button, that bell icon, so you don't miss the new meditations that come to you each and every day. And please help support our channel by sharing these links with others. Pass them along to your friends and relatives as well. God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's sacred word. Pax et bonum omnibus. Peace and blessings to all. Shalom, shalom.